Hello, and welcome to lecture 4. Today, we're going to make buttons. Hopefully, you have watched the previous lecture because we're going to build on top of it. This is the code from the last lecture, and when you run it, it does something like this. In the last lecture, we create a window using this line. We create a list box using this line. Now, we're going to create a button as well. To create a button, we use this command. Remember, once we make the button, we have to make them appear as well. To make the button appear, we use this command. Now let's quickly run the program and see what we get. Hopefully, you enjoy the button you just created. Maybe you have already noticed that creating a button is kind of similar to creating a list box. This is true. Let's check out what other options we have. What if we want to create a label? We would use this command. Now let's try to run the program and see what happens. Notice how we created a label, hello. This label, hello, concurs with what we wrote here, at next to the text section. Now, let's try something else. Let's try creating a text box. We should use this command. And if we run the program, you should see something like this. A text box is a box where you can type text in there. As you can see, the procedure is always the same. Depending on what you want to create, you type a different command. To create a text box, you type text. To create a label, you type label. To create a button, you type of button. So before I digress too far, let's return back to the button. You first create the button with this command, button command. Then you describe the characteristics with the rest of the code. Let's break this down. With the command button, you create a button. Once you create a button, you name it anything you want. I call mine Bobby. I can just as well call it Stacy. Hey, that's my name. Yes, it is your name. The point is that you can name the button anything you want. This first slot, we call it the first argument, is the location of the creation. Where are we creating this button? Well, we create it inside root. What is root? Root is the window we created before. See how the button is inside the window? This might not make sense now, but in the future, when we have like five windows at the same time, we need to make sure the buttons show up in the right place, in the right window. The second location, or the second argument, is what you want the button to say. If you change this to something like, Oh Poopy, the button will say, Oh Poopy. The last argument is the functionality of the button. When you press the button, what does it do? Does it print hello? Does it create a pop-up window? Does it give you money like the ATM machine? Well, this argument controls all that. Later, we will write a set of instructions aside from the code called functions. Functions will be what the button would do when you press it. Let's go back to the code. As you can see, we created the button here. Now, we need to write the functionality of the button. 
To write the functionality, we would start with this line. The first word here, DEF, tells the interpreter that you are starting a function. You see, when the code is running, the interpreter goes and reads each line. Once he reads the line, it does something depending on what the line is. See how it goes and import a library, and then it creates a window and creates a button and so on and so forth. When we write a function, we don't want the code to run it until the button is pressed. I mean, you don't want the ATM machine start spitting out money, or maybe you do. At least we need to have the ability to tell when to run it. In our case, when we press the button. So by typing def, def, the interpreter knows that it's a function, and ignore it for now. Functionality you see here is the name of the function. When you press the button, it goes to command equals and looks for the name of the function. Just like any other name, you can change it to anything you want. For example, let me change this to call me. So right here, when you press the button, the function goes to command, looks for the name, it says call me, and it goes and looks for the function. And then it starts executing everything inside the function. You want to make sure that you match the name from the command to the name in the function. Right now it's easy because we only have one function. In the future, we might have many, many functions. So we need to make sure the name of